Hello traders, it's ETMFX and in this lesson we're going to cover how to build your trading plan from scratch. This video is 100% free so make sure you like, share and subscribe for more lessons. So first step, you need to determine what time frames are you going to use. And it all comes down to two entities, which is micro and a macro. Your macro would be your higher time frame, your micro would be your lower time frame. So your macro would be responsible for let's say your direction or your bias or the way you're anticipating order flow to flow at and micro is where you would be looking at a execution or maybe a sub clues for your execution. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time covering this just for the fact that this is common knowledge, but uh, this is your macro. And let's say in a macro you have a rising price action, you would look on your micro and you would see consecutive swings. So on a macro, this would be your demanding factor, which would be your bias. This is where you deprive your order flow from. And here is where you're looking for ex executions or a deeper look into price action. So if this was a daily purge and price broke structure above and came right back into the range right here, what would occur on your micro is you would see consecutive swings showing behavior patterns. Price rising as price was already in a bullish momentum. Attempting to stop hunt. To later on complete the hunt and that's what that's what would occur on your micro so as you can see this would be your stop hunt on the micro but when you look at the macro it's a simple swing and the huge pro when it comes down to breaking time frames into macro and micro as you can see here when price broke structure and came back into the range you know price is seeking internal liquidity so you know price is seeking internal liquidity but on the macro you are still bullish because you're expecting price to what find a reaction from somewhere inside of the range which, which would be your internal liquidity to continue above right that would be that would be your macro direction so you are bullish on the macro but on the micro you're looking at price in this manner so you're looking at the fact that price came back into the range you're more than likely anticipating a bearish order flow on your micro so you would take advantage of this right and you wouldn't be able to take advantage of this unless you switch from your macro to your micro use the microscope to see price in a more defined way so when you go in your micro you can see consecutive uh, lows being broken, lows being broken, showing that the order flow is bearish until your danger zone. And I explained the danger zone obviously previously, which would be your uh, discounted level. So if you break this range into four, if you break this range into four, your internal liquidity danger would be right here. So on the bearish, uh, on the micro time frame, you would be bearish until your danger zone, which would be your discounted level. So all the, once price comes back into the range and breaks a swing, you are bearish all the way from here till here. That's how switching from macro to micro and just identifying time frame like that helps you understand the market more. So let's move to the next example. So the same macro and micro concepts apply when looking at reactions. So let's say price approached a significant level, whether it's your macro order block or your macro fair value gap or a significant resistance level or whatever. You see a strict reversal. So you see price approaching your level and dropping down, reacting straightly with forming a swing. But on the micro timeframes, you would see a more precise price action. You would see, like like we said earlier, a microscopic view of the market. So you would see price attempting that level multiple times. Consolidating a little bit, forming your base, and then drop. And that's what the macro and the micro does. It's so the trader's job here is to find the macro first. So once you figure out the macro, you set the macro that you want to uh, proceed with. That's when you start looking for your micro and see what works best with your macro. So let's say your 
higher time frame of preference is the daily, you start looking at the four hours, start looking at the one hour and see what works best for your eyes as an individual trader when it comes to your micro and your macro. And a lot of it depends on personality too. So if you're impatient, you would go with lower macro. So you would go with maybe a four hour macro and a five minute micro. And if you're a patient trader, you would maybe go with a weekly macro and let's say an eight hour micro. It all depends on the trader. That's why you want to you wanna go through charts, determine what you would use as your uh, macro, and then slowly start experimenting and figure out what you want to use as your micro. And if you go on my website, on my higher time frame uh, section, I covered how I go about determining a uh, time frame. So I would go from the monthly all the way down to the one hour. So yeah, make sure you check that out. So the next step is what kind of trader are you? Are you a reversal trader or a continuation trader? And that's when time and price theory comes in hand. So if you're a scalper, you would focus mostly on the Asian range, just for the fact that you can trade back and forth, ping pong between the range, between the premium and the discount, just because how usually the Asian range is tight. As you can see the Asian range a lot of times is a lot smaller than the rest of the sessions. If you are a continuation trader, you would trade during London. You would trade during London. And if you're a reversal trader, you would trade during New York. That's where you would usually trade. If you're a reversal trader, you would want to see a sharp turn. You would trade during New York. So after determining what kind of trades you'd be looking for and what session you'd be trading in, you want to look at your daily positions. So let's say this is a daily candle and this is your high and this is your low. So this is your daily range. Are you looking for trades at the top, basically picking out highs and lows of the day? Or are you trading somewhere right here, which would be a continuation? Or would you even be trading here, a deeper continuation? And that's the question. So are you trading somewhere here? Or are you trading somewhere here? Or are you trading somewhere here? Or maybe even here? And that's something you want to look for because you, as building a trading plan and looking for a specific entry, you're looking for consistencies. So if occasionally, you are looking for trades here, but one day you look for a trade, a trade here and other day you look for a trade here. That's inconsistency. Long term, this wouldn't work. If you're expecting to be a profitable trader and, and build a profitable trading career, you're looking for consistency. So that's another thing, another thing to take into consideration, which is your daily position on a daily candle as the candle is forming. Where are you looking for your entry at? And as you back test and forward test, always take no note of where your entries are and look for the similarities and eventually you will pick a specific range. A lot of times when you pull out the range and you look at your trades, you can always see, okay, where did they occur? And in comparison to the previous day, so let's say there was a previous candle before this, you can kind of see, okay, I took my entry position, uh, let's say, at the 50% of the previous day, which in the overall scheme of things is at the high of the day. So that would be your choice of entry. And you want to look at consistencies like this. And that's what makes a great trader. The consistency aspect, not the one day I'll take a trade here, one day I'll take a trade there. That wouldn't work long term. So the next factor is, are you an internal or an external trader or both? By both, I don't mean that you trade sometimes uh, internal and sometimes external. No, I mean combine them both. So let's use uh, internal as an example. So you have your range, you have your swing low and your swing high, and this is your range. And let's say you're looking for an entry somewhere here. This, Let's say this is an order block, for example. This would be an internal this would be an internal liquidity entry. If you're looking for price to reject from here and continue lower, this would be an internal. Now, let's say you're looking for price to come out of the range and you're looking for a setup somewhere here. Maybe there is an order block outside of the range. So you're operating outside of the range to take price back into the range. This would be an external liquidity entry or you're using both external to an internal. So you're waiting for price to come up, stop hunting, come back inside the range and go back into a return to origin for price to continue lower. So that's another thing you want to note. Which entries are you looking for? Preferably you want to stick to one 
and actually specialize in one thing. So are you an internal liquidity trader or an external or both? So build up and approachment come in three phases, compression, ranging, and momentum. We're going to start off with the build up. So what is a build up? A build up is the profile price was in before it formed your point of interest. So in this instant, let's say this is our point of interest. Price was in a ranging profile. So price was consolidating and then it formed your point of interest and then price broke down, came back, revisited and dropped lower. So here, this is our point of interest and price was in a compression. Price was compressing, price was moving as if it's consolidating, but in a tight range and with a direction. So it's a it's a consolidation that has a direction in a tight range. So price was in a compression profile before your point of interest was formed, which is your buildup. And here price was going through a momentum, which is a drop base drop. Price price had momentum. That's what formed this uh, point of interest. So here we have a point of interest and how was it formed? It was formed through momentum. There was a drop, base, drop. So this was a drop, this was a base, and this is drop. So this was a point of interest built on uh, momentum. But what if we were using this point of interest? What would this one be? This one would be a ranging because the source of this OB is the range, which is price was ranging before it formed this order block. So that's all buildup is, is the price behavior before forming your point of interest. Not going to waste any time here. So price approachment is similar to the buildup. So if this is your point of interest, you would want to see the way price is approaching your point of interest. So whether it's in a compression approaching your point of interest, this could be a compression or if it's ranging or if it's using momentum. So the next thing you want to look at is how many liquidity levels has price taken? So let's say this is your entry. If price comes up here, takes this liquidity and comes back down and reacts from price, this would be one level of liquidity. Now let's say price took out two levels, came back down. That's two levels of liquidity taken and so on and so on. And the reason you want to take that into account because it makes a difference. The trades that you take off one liquidity are different from two or three or whatever. And it's not about what is better because it, it all depends on the trader's trading plan. But uh, for me personally, I like one level of liquidity. Like one of my setups is taking one level. Obviously, when you look to the left, there's a whole situation going on that's forcing price to shoot up. But it takes one level of liquidity and comes back down to my RTO. Now, what negates the trade, which means that I wouldn't take the trade if price does what? Obviously, take two levels and comes back down. For me, that was too much power for price to shoot up all the way down uh, up here, take all this liquidity and come down for me to expect price to shoot up. Uh, even more and that's why in one of my uh, entry models I'm anti two liquidities but there's other entries where you would want price to take more than one level of liquidity maybe two or three so that's something you should take into consideration so before we're done with this lesson here's a bonus rule and this is something we will cover in future lessons just because this will take time to explain right now uh, this is what we call our entry being present in different time frames so this stop hunt right here is present all the way from the one hour to the 12 hour. So it's present in all these time frames. And that makes a difference because sometimes, let's say you have an entry, let's say a purge. You have a purge that's present on the two hour, but when you go on the eight hour, it's a wick. So it's non present anymore. And that's something you should take note of. You should journal. And you can see on the four hour, the purge is still present. This was the swing, and price took out that swing. In my opinion, these are the uh, the convincing purges. Here's the eight hour. This is the swing, and price 
took out and came back so you can still see the bodies it's still present so let's go to an example where the purge actually disappears when you go on higher time frames so here is a purge example this is the one hour but look once we go on the four hour the purge starts to diminish it's still present on the four hour but once you go on the eight hour it's non-existent and that's the difference between a purge that stays throughout a specific amount of time and one that disappears. And we'll cover this deeply in another lesson. I'd appreciate you for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And comment. Let us know what you want me to cover next.